Hey YouTube, I'm back. Uh, I, I know it's been a while since I did the last content video. Um, so, I'm still not 100%, but I'm close enough to be able to do some of these types of videos. Uh, this one is uh, Position Zones Part 2, or Leave Zones Part 2. Um, so we had a couple of things to talk about, um, and I was going to do two of them in this one video, but it turned into an hour-long video, so I'm cutting it into two sections. Uh, the one, this one, we're going to talk about uh, the options on the two position zones that exist on almost every shot. Almost every shot has two options, uh, or at least two options for you uh, to shoot. If you're a straight pool player, a one pocket player, uh, and to a lesser extent, an eight ball player, typically you're going to do almost all of your work in one half of the table. And when you're in one half of the table, stunning the ball a few inches this way, a few inches that way, um, bouncing off the rail and going six inches up, those are the kinds of shots that you're going to spend most of your time shooting. Now, if you're a rotation player, like I am, uh, you spend a lot of your time moving around the table. It's the big defining characteristic of rotation games. Um, you're not worried about precision control so much as you are being able to get into specific areas of the table, the zones that we, we talked about, and uh, moving from one end of the table to the other because you don't have a choice. Uh, if you had all of your balls in one half of the table, um, rotation would look a lot more like a straight pool or a, or a one pocket rack, uh, but, but they don't. Uh, and so one of the big differences in players is their ability to get from one end of the table to the other and get a leap. Um, and as you move up in technical ability uh, and, and understanding of, of how this works, uh, it becomes easier and easier to move long distances and, and have good outcomes. So today we're going to talk about uh, the two different position zones that you have. Um, and you're going to see there's always one that points up the table and there's always one that points across the table. And so when you're playing in one half of the table, you use the one that goes across the table and when you're playing from one end of the table to the other, you use the one that goes up the table. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to look at how that works, and we're going to talk about uh, some. Of, we're going to talk about a couple of the routes briefly. We're not going to go in detail on them uh, in this video. We will go into detail on them when we're talking about routes very specifically. Uh, but we're going to talk about two of the really popular routes to get up and down the table. Um, Again, we're not going to go into detail on those. This is just kind of the basics of some specific uh, layouts that I that I throw out there. Um, I did edit the video. I cut it into two parts. You'll have another part very quickly because it's already been shot. It uh, and and there's very little that I need to do to edit it. Uh, so it will be up probably in the next. I don't know within within a week. I want to give this one time to, for everybody to look at it before we go to the next one. Um, so probably. Next week, uh, a week from today, today's Saturday, probably a week from set, from today, we'll do the next one. Uh, in it. For those of you that are curious, what happened is um, I had an injury when I was in the military. Uh, the very last week or last month of National Guard drill, uh, we were on the range, we were doing speed drills with the M240 Bravo machine gun. Uh, and. Basically what that is, is you started 500 yards back, you ran 200 yards up with a partner. Uh, one of you had the tripod, one of you had the gun. Um, and the one with the tripod would put the tripod down and then start getting out the ammo. The gunner would take the gun and place it on the tripod and get it put in place and attach it to the... We were actually using the pintle and all that stuff. Um, 
and then you uh, the you would together load the weapon and then shoot. Um, well, when you first place the tripod, uh, the feet aren't set. I mean, you pull them back to try to set them as much as you can, but if you're doing it for time, you kind of just lean into the gun and let your shoulder hold it in place and, and let it work itself back to set into the ground. Um, so we, we ran up and set the gun and loaded it and I put it in my shoulder and I didn't have it seated tight enough and it bounced and hit my shoulder um, and it caused nerve damage. Um, I'm actually my, having numbness in my fingers and my toes from it. Um, for about two months you could not touch the right side of me. If you put your hand on my shoulder I was on the ground. Um, well, it turns out that that also started displacing my shoulder. And what I mean by that is not the ball and socket, the entire shoulder. Uh, and it had been getting progressively worse. So uh, the injury was, or the, the remedy was to reset my entire shoulder. Um, it was causing back spasms, muscle spasms. I still have a couple of them, but most of them have been relieved by moving the shoulder back in place. But now I've got a weird hitch that shows up sometimes in my stroke on certain shots. Uh, that I'm overcoming. So anyhow, if you didn't care, you should forward to here. <laughs> All right, so um, leave zones, part two. In part one, we talked about position zones. We talked about the parts of a position zone, and we talked about where you really want to land the cue ball in the position zone. Uh, if you haven't watched that one, go watch it. Um, so the first thing I want to cover is the two, uh, the two sides of the position zone. So to there, we'll put the one here, and we've got ball in hand. Now, you have a choice here. You have two different ways you can come into this position zone, and the way that you come into this position zone really depends on where you are on the one. So the first place you can be is you've got this angle here. Okay? This angle here. Well, that's, that's too much. Maybe like this that comes out to here. And then you've got a position zone on this side, which comes out like this. Now, you will know, and I, I'll put those graphics up. Um, so when we're talking about this, you know that um, the further away you are from the middle here, the further you are from this yellow zone, uh, the less of your momentum gets transferred to the object ball. So when we're going all the way down the table, the, the position zones I'm talking about are the orange ones. You can see the orange ones here. Uh, so the orange one on the right will lead to the two rail positions, uh, uh, two rail leave on the four ball, and the orange on the left is the one that I'm talking about that's back and forth across the table. You really don't want to be in these green zones here simply because you're too close and you're not going to get as much movement as you need to go down the table. You're going to have to hit it really hard. Um, those are your stun zones and in this case we want to roll the cue ball because we, we want to get around the table. We use the rails to control the speed rather than rather than stunning a few inches into position. What you'll notice is that the one on this side goes more towards the rail and the one on this side is going more down the table. Almost always, unless you happen to be exactly, you know, on an exact line in the center. If you're here, let's say here, right? You've got a position zone that goes like this. Yeah, it actually goes out like this. And then you've got one that goes almost straight across the table. One is almost always straight across the table and the other one is always up the table. So the question of, which way to get position on that two is going to depend on how we need to get on the four. Okay? So, let's, let's think about this for a second. To get on the four, your position zone is here, right? So the key to this one is that you can be anywhere on this four because there is no next shot. Uh, so the closer to the yellow you are, the better. If you're in the yellow, if you're in the green, that's great. If you're in the orange, um, you're still just fine. You get into the red, you start to have that possibility of, if you hit it too hard, the cue ball goes straight up the, 
to the other end of the table and scratches in the corner. So we really want to be as close to the yellow as possible because we don't want the cue ball to move. So if your position zone is here, then the best way to get into it is to come this way, right? You have two ways to do that. You can be on this side and go two rails, two rails around and bounce into the position zone like this where you're coming straight down the line through the position zone. That's, that's one way. The other way you can do this is to go across the table, across the table, three rails and into that position zone. Um, or, you know, you can always do the draw shot that goes this way and come into the wide part of the position zone. Of those three, I like coming, I personally like coming in this way the best, you know, the, the two rails and over. Uh, the three rails going this way, going this way, I like a little bit less um, because you have to hit it hard on a thinner shot. Uh, and one drawing down the table like this, while it's fairly straightforward and the position zone is really wide out here, you're okay. this shot I would not want to deliberately set up unless there was traffic in the middle of the table that was going to preclude me from going one, two, and out, or one, two, three, and into it. Unless there's traffic in the middle, my preferred position zone on this shot is actually to be on this side of the two, shoot into it, go two rails and down, because that's the best way to get position on the four. Now, it does mean leaving the cue ball on the short side of the two. A lot of players don't like to do that, and that's fine. You could also do something out here where you come one, and you'll see pros do this a lot. Today's pros, you won't see the older pros do it, but going one, two, and into the position zone here. Okay? Today's pros kind of like that shot. I don't. Um, you can do it and go up the position zone, but if you remember, when we talk, or down the position zone, actually, this is, this is down the funnel. Um, if you remember, that is our fourth best way of doing this. Um, our best way of doing it was stop and then stun, neither of which applies to this ball because you're not going to stop or stun it and, get, and be down there um, without side spin. Remember when we talk about stun, we're talking about you hit it and you just drift a few inches. Um, our third way is to use the rails, and that's what the two rail one does. Use the rails and go up the funnel, or down the funnel, I mean. Uh, our second choice is also down the funnel, but it's, it's more rails. you got to hit it harder, a little harder to control. Uh, and our option that the pros use today is not to scratch in the side, although that's really easy on that shot. The one that you will see the pros shooting today is two rails like this, which puts you going up the funnel, which is, which is less preferable than going down the funnel because there's an, there's an opportunity when you go down the funnel, there's an opportunity, and you saw me do it when I, the first time I did it, where you make contact with the ball and you don't want to do that because if you hit it, here you're fine if you if you come in if you come in and brush it like I did you'd be fine you'd be able to get away with that but if you happen to come this way you're you're also fine but a lot of times you're going to end up hitting it and end up with something like that and you just don't want that so um, that's part of risk management we'll talk about those kinds of things later right now <clears throat> For me, it's kind of a dealer's choice. <clears throat> if I have ball in hand on that one, the, deal, the choice is I can go straight up and down, and guess what? I'm in my lead zone pretty much as soon as I leave that rail. And then it's just a matter of how close I get to the two ball and not overrunning that. This way is, is a two rail shot 
and it takes you to the other side. Okay, so dealer's choice. If you prefer, like today's pros do, to go two rails in, in, into the leaf, then what you want to do is you want to go to this side and go two rails to get to that leaf. And hey, if you under hit it, you can still go two rails. Okay, and we're going to talk about that one in a second. My choice on this, because I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, distance doesn't have any real meaning to me on the, on the pool table, okay? If I'm here, or I'm here, I can shoot and make that ball. So distance doesn't really mean much. Uh, I'm just gonna, I would just roll that in the top English to get up here, um, get somewhere. I wouldn't want to be that steep, but just top English takes it like this. And you can see anywhere down there, I've got my, my leaf. By the way, you could also leave this with just a slight angle and go forward and up the table for the floor. That's going across the position zone. We don't want to do that for the same reason, which is the same reason we don't want to draw this into the position zone because it's going across the zone instead of down the zone. So, okay, so for me, I would put that ball out in the middle and I would shoot it with just the top English. Um, maybe even stun it just a little bit. I would put the cue ball somewhere out here. I'm going to shoot it in. I'm going to go top English. I'm going to put just a little bit of left English on it. And the reason for that is you would be surprised how big these pockets are when you shoot with no side English. If, you, if I shoot this with top, it probably goes in the side. Okay, so I'm going to put just a little bit of left on it to keep it out of the side pocket. When I say a little bit of left, I'm talking about hitting it just up and to the left on the ball. Okay, I probably needed a little bit more left, but you get the idea. Top, little bit of left, just to keep it out of the side pocket. And now I've got my leaf. Okay. Again, for me, this is a two rail leaf. We'll talk about that route. It's one of my favorite routes. Yeah, I overhit it a little bit, but you can see I'm going to be fine. No matter what speed I hit that, I will be just fine. I can use just left. To shorten it up so I don't come as far down and there I am I'm in the zone okay I can use top left that gives me a little more speed and again coming down coming up, down the, down the funnel so when you're looking at these Figure out your shot. At, you know, people say the third ball. I actually go all the way back from my my breakout or my goal, whatever my goal is. Um, figure out your next two shots on each shot. Okay, here it is. What do we have? Well, I would shoot the one here because the two's got a little bit of that pocket. I've got ball in hand, right? So I would shoot the one in that pocket. Now the question is, do I stun forward? Do I stun back? Do I just stop it? What do I do? Okay, so my three ball, I've got two leaf zones. I can so where the two is, I have a choice. I can shoot the two and draw down the, down the funnel. Or I could go forward and down the funnel, or I could go up and out, which is also down the funnel. A lot of players will go up and out. I actually don't like up and out in this case because, number one, you have to force the angle to go straight. Um, 
you you're you're going to have if you put top English, you're going to be forward of it. If you the tangent line is here, so up up and down is okay. Um, here's where the challenge is. I don't want to take a chance on moving the three, so I don't want to run forward and into it. That would be bad, right? I don't want to take a chance on the three ob uh, obscuring my itself or, uh, or or getting in the way in the path. So I don't want to go this way if I don't have to. I can if I have traffic, but I don't have to. There's no traffic here, so uh, so my choice on this one would be to push past center, and then I can either draw straight up into my into my lead, or I could go forward and out into my lead. Either way. Dealer's choice. You always have two ways to play the shot, and the way that you play the shot depends on your next shot. Okay, so how do I get my angle on the two? I'm going to get just a little bit of angle so that this shot is not straight in. That's going to allow me to roll to the rail and over. What I don't want to do is just try to baby it into position. Okay. Real easy to get the wrong lead. Next thing you know, the cue ball's down here and you've got a tough cut and you have to play safe. Or you stop it and you end up straight in and now you've got to work. You don't want to take those chances. So what you do is you use the rails to eliminate that chance. What we're going to do is put this on an angle so that it rolls naturally into the rail and down the line of the shot that we want. So we want to hit the rail somewhere in here so we'll set up our cue ball so our tangent line or so our, our follow line goes to that rail and just come straight across and be in line the whole time. Whenever you have a chance to use the rails, when they say using the rails to control the speed, this is what they're talking about, okay? When they say using the rails to control the, control the speed, um, I'll tell you what, let me put that right on the spot so I can reset it the same way. If I'm here and I roll forward, yeah, I got my lead, but did you see how speed dependent that is? If I roll that just a little bit too hard, now I've got a bad end. I only went another two inches, and now I've got a bad angle because if I shoot this, the tangent line is running straight at the three. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to take that speed control out of the equation and use the rail to control the speed. So obviously we still want to roll forward, but instead of trying to touch roll it, we're going to roll it to the rail, and we'll let the rail help us with our speed. See that? I overhit it by a mile and I still got my angle. I'm still on exactly the right angle to come up and go down the bottom. Just like I had planned. Even though I overhit it. You see that? That's why we use the rails for speed. That's why we take those angles. Because even if you hit it a million miles an hour, like I just did, you still end up with your lead. And this allows you not to have to have that super fine control on your shot. Now, you just worry about making the shot and let the rail give you your angle. Again, I hit that much softer, uh, which is why it didn't spin as much. So when I hit it harder, it spun forward more. In this case, the spin was dead by the time it got there. But guess what? I still have my exact angle. You see that? Use the rails. Really important. Use the rails to control your speed. Okay? Okay, so that wraps up part two. Uh, if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell. You know, you got to say that because for whatever reason, nobody does it if you don't say it. So, uh, 
don't really understand that, but uh, but um, that wraps up part two, and uh, we'll be getting part three very quickly. As I said, I've already shot the video. It was meant to be part of this video, but this video just got too long, so uh, we'll see you next time, and it'll be pretty quick this time. It won't be a month wait for the next video. Thanks. We'll see you next time.